Okay, I think we're good to go. So it's uh, one o'clock now, according to what I see. So um, today we have the second uh, half of conversational recommendation systems uh, that is going to be presented by our presenters from 6101. Um, do note that uh, for all of our wing members and external guests, uh, we are going to actually run the reading group again starting next semester. Um, so that will be early January. Uh, but it will focus on uh, recommendation systems and conversational systems. So um, this is sort of like a, a, a prequel, if you will, uh, to that course. Um, this is already, as you know, not much of a course, but more of a discussion group. And um, we will be going through pretty much curated papers that um, a couple people in the group, especially Wen Chang subgroup, um, of which uh, Yi Song is the current representative in this group. Uh, we'll be um, talking about. Okay, so uh, if you want to join that, uh, just let us know. Uh, there will be an announcement um, in the usual channels, uh, but if you have uh, friends or co-workers who you think would like to participate, then um, uh, let them know about it. Okay, uh, so without further ado, uh, I think we'll um, go ahead and shift to our presenters. For steps, uh, please note that your abstract should be in. And uh, we uh, are going to have, um, again, basically uh, breakout rooms uh, for each project um, that will be uh, featured. And uh, what will happen there is that uh, you can be present uh, in the breakout room um, during that time. But we'll also try to uh, put up the main videos um, that you guys are going to make um, into the into the main rooms. So um, you know, in Zoom, there's the main room and there's breakout rooms. In the breakout rooms, when they're active, um, you can uh, be there to answer questions. So uh, we'll need to know from you roughly two to three half hour slots when you're uh, 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 going to be around for steps. Okay, steps has moved its time uh, period uh, from. Uh, uh, in the evening until uh, late afternoon to early evening. So the event now is Wednesday, uh, uh, November of 11th, uh, November 11th from 3 p.m. that's 1500 uh, to 8 p.m. that's 2100. Okay, so um, during that time period, it's obviously it's five hours. It's too long for anyone to sit in a, a Zoom meeting. So uh, we, we would just ask you to make yourselves available um, during two to three half hour slots, okay? Um, those times, uh, again, if you work with your teammates, if you're not doing it solo, then uh, you should go visit other, other posters uh, from our session so that uh, you can converse with um, the people there, okay? I think that makes it um, as congenial as it can get in Zoom. Um, yeah, I mean, it obviously is much nicer to have this workshop in person, but this way we also get uh, the help uh, and uh, participation of people overseas like uh, uh, Liang Ming and, and a couple other people who are in China or in India who aren't able to participate otherwise. So it's a, it's a good trade-off. Okay, uh, without further ado, um, that's all the announcements that I have today. I'm going to uh, put that on the general channel shortly while our presenters go at it for the first part. Okay, so I think we had an order uh, that uh, Yi Song had mentioned, and I think uh, Sunil is going first because I think you needed to leave, right? Or... Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you see okay, my screen? Okay, so I'm um, ready. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, cool. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. So today I'll be presenting uh, this paper by Zhang et al. So it's titled Conversational Contextual Bandit Algo and Its Applications. So uh, briefly, the agenda will be like, first of all, we'll see uh, what contextual bandit framework is. Then we will talk about exploration versus exploitation dilemma and how conversational aspect can be added to this framework. And then uh, we will be looking at the algo and whatever uh, results the authors obtained with the experiments they conducted. So uh, starting with the bandit framework itself. So 
so banded framework generally it's it's a problem from reinforcement learning where a gambler is supposed to uh, select a uh, machine out of n machines the key point here is these machines are non identical and there is an assumption that one of these machine is is optimal in a sense that once you choose that and if you keep on playing with that machine your rewards will be maximized so uh, it is called multi banded in the sense that you have multiple machines so contextual banded problem uh, with respect to item recommendation so typically here you have an agent and you have a user so agent will say recommend items to the user and the goal is to learn the item recommendations so uh, in this setting you can say the item is typically an arm and uh, in long run uh, the agent want to optimize that which which of the arms to be showed to the user so each action or item is called arm here and contextual vector of a arm in this context is basically you will have uh, features of the user so which will be shared across uh, all the arms and then there will be particular features will be specific to the arms then the dilemma for the recommender system or the agent here is that uh, should it leverage already what it has explored and uh, inferred about the preference of the user or should it uh, try to reveal the unknown preferences of the user this dilemma is typically called exploitation versus exploration dilemma in reinforcement learning setup so the typical issue generally with uh, algorithms here is that they need to explore a lot to uh, to come up with meaningful suggestions so uh, so the the key point of this entire paper is to incorporate a conversational aspect to this recommendation system so that the exploration is minimized and you you learn the recommendation as soon as possible so uh, this is just a typical example of say spotify and so if you see these these are the uh um, this this is from the home page of spotify so you can see like they suggest you similar items which is something called exploration because it's not something which you have listened already the recommender system is trying to explore the possibilities they show you your favorite playlist and the shows you might like so the shows you might like is again exploration but your favorite playlist is kind of exploitation of your preferences similarly if uh, it suggests you short curves your favorite albums top shows whatever you recently played this all comes under exploitation part because it's basically derived directly from your user history or whatever it has seen and learned about you and finally it recommends something for you for the day and which is called so recommended for today so this is a mixture of exploration and exploitation whatever the final recommendation it is making you for that day so it in in the our framework setting this is called say at round t it is suggesting you this and based upon the feedback it will get so whether you will choose the items from these recommendations or not the recommendation system will again adapt its uh, suggestions so in uh, this paper they use a news recommendation uh, problem to implement their idea and here it typically the agent is your news recommendation system and it news article is a arm and whatever you know about the user in the article they are stored in a contextual information vector then reward is whether or not the user reads the article and uh, there is a theta vector which represents the user's preferences so basically recommendation system is trying to learn these theta parameters and the goal is to basically maximize the cumulative click through rate so this goal can depend upon business to business what they want to optimize for so now let us uh, uh, make the problem bit concrete by incorporating few formulations so typically uh, so this is the formulation for just the contextual bandit we are not yet incorporating the conversational aspect here so now uh, you will be having n arms n arms basically say you have n number of items which you can recommend and uh, that will form a set a 
and you will have typically say t rounds one to t where at each particular round small t uh, you, there will be pool size from the from the set a which is called at and this is shown to the agent so agent uh, have to now select from this particular subset of a uh, like the item for the recommendation so uh, corresponding to each arm you have a contextual vector which is basically all the features associated with that particular item it also incorporates the uh, user information and finally an arm is chosen from this based upon whatever the algorithm is and once it is shown uh, to the user or it is recommended to the user you get a particular reward so reward can be binary or uh, let's say continuous depending upon how you formulate the problem and uh, then this this cycle is uh, kept on till uh, say total around t and you try to learn the perfect recommendations for a given user why the subscript for can i ask one question yes, why the yes. subscript for reward is at comma t is that overloaded uh, uh, it's it's basically a T is like the action at a particular time T. Yes, exactly. Uh, there's action at a particular time T. Why do you need a T again? Uh, I do because in the, is this yeah? Yours um, uh, in if we don't choose uh, this is to distinguish it probably from the entire pool set of A. Uh, yes, exactly. That's why you have a T. Yes. Uh, okay. Mm. So I, I think we're talking about this uh, circled part here, you know, R A T. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, it could be, uh, I mean, normally we might denote it as just R A T, uh, A comma T, right? So there's an action taken at a particular uh, time. But um, uh, you can you can certainly view it as um, an action for a particular time stamp yes. compared to the entire set of actions totally available at all time stamps. So maybe some of the bandits are not available at certain times. <clears throat> might be. Yeah, I mean this is not just notation; it's a fact of parameterization of the reinforcement learning problem, right? Yes, you're right. Yeah, so if not, uh, if not- You have many copies of A if it's AT, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's just A and T, then it's one copy of A, then you have those weight assigned to A and that's one type of problem. If you have this notation, AT and T, then you have had to have multiple copies of A. And then as if the like so, some weight is not shared and that affect the structure of the learning, I guess sure. it, it's just not- Yeah, it's you're not exactly right. Yeah, because uh, if you have an extra notation, then you're going to sparsify the data quite a bit, right? Because yeah. um, you have to split all the actions across that. So there could be different ways that you want to parameterize it. So I, I guess Sunil is presenting one particular way, um, but you could do some type of um, pooling um, to just use A comma T, or you could choose some type of composite structure where you use the uh, A comma T notation most of the time, but then um, you know, linearly combine it with uh, action uh, time, uh, as in this notation, when there's sufficient data. All right. So is there a particular reason to choose this form of parameterization? So um, yeah, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, Sunil, do you know uh, why? Uh, no, one? like, uh, it's the one which they chose here. I don't see any specific reason. The, even, yeah, she is right in saying that uh, whenever this RAT comes in combination with T, the T is same. So it doesn't add any extra information there. Okay, well, we can, uh, you know, uh, our scribe uh, team, as well as all of us, we can go look at the paper that uh, Sunil has uh, put up uh, on the Slack channel, and then we can try to uh, try to uh, see why, why they chose this particular notation. Great, great question. Thank you. So, and the goal here is to minimize something which they define here as regret. So regret is basically your, uh, 
difference of the expected value of the optimal action and the action which the recommender system chooses. So if this quantity is minimized, then it means uh, we are tending to learn the optimal policy. So, and the agent needs to make a trade-off between the best arm on feedbacks versus the arms which the agent is unsure of, which is typically your exploration and exploitation dilemma. So something similar in genetic algo also happens where, where you have to choose from crossover and mutation. So crossover, there is something like you are trying to exploit whatever good solutions you already found. And mutation is something like you are exploring rather than exploiting. So uh, this is, uh, this is the, uh, one of the algorithms which uh, to, to address the contextual bandit problem. So uh, the idea here is then, uh, so till round T, whatever actions or whatever arms you have chosen, uh, like before this round, and whatever the rewards did you get. So here again, you can see the notation. So it's like A11, AT minus one, T minus one. So I'm not sure if, if we drop this one, are we losing anything? Uh, I'm not sure. But so yeah, so basically based upon the arms you have selected and the rewards you received corresponding to those arms, you estimate the rewards and then you select a new arm. So this is very basic algo. And depending upon how you are selecting, you can have different versions of the algorithms. So uh, here, this the first term R A it it corresponds to the reward. So this is particular to the upper confidence bound algorithm. So here we have one extra term C, which is the confidence interval of arm A at round T. So we we try to choose the action which maximizes this expression, and a reward here. If you see, it's it's a, in a linear form. So this, this is now corresponding to a uh, particular version, even in upper confidence bound algo, which is known as linear version of that. So the theta corresponds to your user preferences, and this is the vector which we are trying to learn. And epsilon is the random noise which is assumed here. So that was without any conversational aspect. And if you add the conversational aspect, so now what happens is that uh, there is a conversational component and um, where the agent asks certain questions to the user and depending upon the response, he selects the arm. So this, this component reframes the problem as conversational contextual bandit problem. So the idea is to basically accelerate the bandit learning. So if we try to modify our previous formulation, so now um, we have something called key pool as well. So uh, at every round T, we have a, a key term values and the relation between arms and keys is uh, summarized in this matrix, which is, well, one second. So uh, which is called W. So corresponding to each arm and each key, you have weights and uh, the rest of the formulation remains same. The contextual vectors remain same. And we have two more components now, the key, uh, the, the key value pool and the, the matrix W. So and intuitively, what is K and what is W? So K is uh, basically, uh, if you are asking the question, it has to be based upon some key value, say in terms of news recommendation. So this document can have multiple key term associated, like it's a news sport, uh, it's news car, or it can be even say about some person who is in the news item. So the key terms so will be that and uh, like, how much weightage like this arm, how much it is related to this particular key term, that that weight is, uh, is uh, summarized in this matrix W. So suppose here you have say uh, three arms and you have two keys. So you have three rows and two keys. So there is a bipartite matching from A to K. And how does it relate to the uh, question asking, conversational thing? 
Ooh, ah, so is there the, a part that is the user? Of yes. Point? So when we'll see the algo, we'll see that the information, uh, this information is used in ARM recommendation. So instead of directly choosing from the rewards based upon uh, the arms and the context, we also incorporate the feedback which we obtained uh, after asking a particular question based upon these key key value pairs. Right, so the weight is learned based on the question being answered. No, no. so the weight you have to decide like beforehand. So this W is not learned, it's, it's predefined at the beginning itself. So, okay. so it's something like, say you have a news item, you can tag it with say four, four, uh, four key values. Say this is about this particular guy. This is news sports. This is also say related to. So is it true to say that K and W is deterministic and it won't change? Yes, yes. If they won't. And the, the, the way they affect the traditional algorithm is that they adding onto the um, state representation of each action, like ATT. Uh, yes, like the, the process of estimating the rewards incorporates that information. Then where does the information of the question asking flow into this problem, this, this diagram? Uh, like um, in this diagram, so this reward, uh, so this has to be updated. So this will be our, our dash. So if you see this direction, this arrow, so th mm -hmm. this, this, uh, this somehow incorporates or flows the information during the decision making. So when we will see the detail, it will be much more clear, like how okay. this influence. Yeah, thank you. So uh, another thing is like conversation frequency, how often we should uh, we should be uh, asking the question to the user. So this function is basically like, a, so there is a B function, which, which is basically the cumulative number of questions till round T. So if the difference between BT and BT minus one is greater than zero, that means now we have to ask a question. And uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise we don't ask a question and we, we just keep on recommending. So say if this function is nothing but say ceiling of T by M. So after say M rounds, this number will jump by one. And since it is multiplied by K, so we can ask K questions. So say if M is five, so after, after uh, say five rounds, we can ask K questions to the user. And then we can use that information in recommending. So, and uh, another assumption is that we, we try to not ask too many questions. So, uh, so the B function is generally much, much, uh, much less than T. So uh, this is the general algo of uh, con UCB. So con UCB is conversational upper uh, contextual bandit algorithm. So the inputs to the system are A, K, W, and B, T. So A is our arm set, K is our uh, key term set, W is the matching between A and K, and BT is our uh, question frequency uh, function. So generally what we do is for all the rounds we start, we observe the contextual vector X for each of the arms. And if the conversation is allowed, so that means if our QT is one, then we select key terms to conduct the conversations and we receive the feedbacks. So, uh, so anything which is here tilde, so the tilde corresponds to the uh, key level interactions and anything which is without tilde, it is, it is your general arm level, uh, like recommendations or rewards. So then you select a arm. So you can see here, there's a modification in the reward function. So here you have a tilde and then you receive a reward after suggesting this arm and you update your model and you keep on running. So th this is just a um, broader picture. So now we will go into um, bit specifics. So this is much more detailed algorithm here. So uh, again, the input remains same. 
and we have AKW and we have the frequency function. Then these are some of the initializers. So why do we need those for that? Uh, let us first uh, break down the algo into two parts. So the first is like key selection at every round, which key we have to show to the user. So when I say key, so let us say the key is uh, sports news. So I'll ask the user like, do you like to uh, read sports news? So he will either say yes or no. Depending upon that, we can get that feedback. So, but we have to ask, we have to decide which key to ask. So that is the first problem, which is called key selection here. The second problem is arm selection. So arm selection is uh, like which item to recommend, which is a typical problem in itself. So, so the first uh, uh, key term uh, parameter vector optimization problem can be formulated something like this. So here you can see, uh, so theta transpose x a tau. So this is nothing but the user preference, which you obtained till now based upon the key term value uh, parameter vector. And uh, so we are trying to minimize this difference. So whatever feedback we are getting and whatever feedback uh, is, uh, whatever feedback we get based upon the current parameter values. So that difference has to be minimized. So it's, it's typically something like least squared problem. And then there is a regularization uh, aspect to it. So this lambda controls the regularization aspect. We are trying to learn here theta tilde. So now if you see this is a typical uh, least square formulation with a regularization component. And the good thing about this is that it has a very, it has a closed form solution. So computationally, we, we get a solution in one step. Then the second optimization problem here is we are trying to we are trying to minimize this difference. So this is the difference between so theta here is the final user preference vector and R are say the rewards. So again the same logic goes here that we are trying to minimize this term, and the second term is uh, like we are trying to minimize the difference between whatever parameter vector we are obtaining from the key term level and whatever uh, theta is the, whatever theta we have from the arm level. So here, this lambda controls the, the weight, like whether we are interested in this or this, depending upon the weights, we can control that. So, so the first term is greedily search for the current optimal action. And the second term is to do some exploration. Yes. Okay. And so both of these problems have a optimized solution. So in line 12, if you see, so these are the closed form solutions of these two optimization problem. So here they have incorporated M and uh, M tilde matrices along with B and B tilde vectors. So, uh, so basically if you solve them, you will get the solution something like this. So theta T tilde is nothing but this expression where M is this, B is this, M is this, B is this. And uh, most of these summations are absorbed in the loops and this lambda i here. So this is the part of initializer here. And similarly, one minus lambda i, this is part of the initializer here. And these two terms we update in the last line like m here. So, oops. So now uh, we have to say select the arm here. So for selection of arm, line 12 basically, uh, so line, if you see the line 13, this is nothing but the arm selection algorithm. So here we have to assume that somehow we have found the key. So if you see the line five, it says select a key term K according to equation eight. So we'll see the equation eight, uh, how to select the key later. 
So we were trying to maximize this equation where we know the reward is nothing but a linear combination of, uh, so, sorry, uh, not linear combination, the dot product between your contextual vector and the user preference vector. So uh, there is this theorem, so which is directly used to to modify uh, this arm selection from this expression to expression in equation 13. So it says that if if we have uh, say theta star and theta star tilde, which are like the true parameter vectors but are unknown, and uh, if we are if we assume that uh, theta t tilde minus theta star tilde with a matrix norm of mt star where this norm is defined here as uh, x transpose mx square root. So if this is less than a particular value and these two error distributions are sub-Gaussian, then with this probability, this inequality holds. So we can see that this term is nothing but the confidence bound here. So I'm in sorry, uh, uh, the math here is quite involved. So can you give us a little bit of intuition? What is this lower bound? What is this exactly is bounding? What, why do we want to have this? Huh, so uh, what, you, if you see the arm selection here, the, the first term is quite clear, like it's the reward. Yes, the second, second is the confidence. Second is the confidence bound. So this confidence bound, is this expression if you see. So uh, this is basically uh, what we are trying to do is theta is the optimal uh, optimal user preference, which we don't know. And theta mm -hmm. t is the user preference, user parameter vector at a given time. So, so the, the theta t, so theta t is our estimate. Yeah, theta it's the, star, it's what uh, is the optimal one that we want to get close to. Yes. Okay. So we want to uh, minimize this difference here. Mm -hmm. So now this expression cannot be simply used in the algo. So they prove it in appendix that uh, this expression is always going to be less than this. Right, and this M and B thing is the solution to the uh, previous optimization problem. Yes, yeah, like okay. in the previous solution, whatever M and MT right. prime are there, so these expressions are the same. So okay, the yeah. Only, only yeah. thing here is this alpha T tilde, it's not defined here, but it's yeah. assumed that uh, like uh, this expression is less than this, but in next equation, when we will be selecting a particular key value, then we will see like what alpha t prime is. It is also something similar to alpha t here. So uh, in general, um, the alphabet without tilde, it's what? And with tilde, it's what? So with the, without tilde, it's the arm level. And with oh. tilde, the, it's the key level. OK, yeah, thank you. So. Uh, so uh, that's the arm selection part. So if you if you move this, uh, uh, if you use this inequality, and if you add it here, so it becomes this. So in line thirteen, the arm selection happens based upon the reward and the confidence term. Now the if you go back and have a look at the line four, here it says that select a key term according to equation eight. So let's see what the key selection is. So in key selection, what we are trying to do is uh, whatever whatever uh, user preference we have learned and whatever the contextual vector is and whatever the optimal user preference is. So we want to minimize the expected value of this expression. So if we can minimize the expected value of this expression, while choosing the key itself, then that will ensure that we are choosing the optimal question to be asked to the user. So here again, now they show that if you are trying to uh, optimize for this expression, so then you have to select a key which can minimize the trace of this expression. So the proof of this is again a bit involved in is it's in appendix. So again, this expression can be also like after applying few 
algebraic identities it can be reduced to that you you have to find k such that this expression gets maximized for that particular k and so, it, so yes. i i guess uh, here the theta star is also unknown like the previous case so is, is that the same trick they used to apply find a upper bound then that you, they use their upper bound to yeah yeah so it? here also we same? don't here also we don't know theta star, but mm -hmm. uh, to effectively minimize for this expression, they prove that uh, if you, so if you, that if must you be. yeah, if you optimize for the trace of this, or if you find say k which maximizes this expression, it is equivalent. So here it's in the algo chart. It's not shown that how it is chosen. So they just say equation eight, but this is the equation eight here. So uh, now here they say like, uh, if you ensure to choose the query according to equation eight, uh, then with probability one minus sigma, this inequality holds. So you saw like in the previous, uh, here, uh, here we assumed that theta t minus theta prime norm with respect to mt tilde is less than alpha t prime. But here they show that if you choose it according to this equation, then this inequality holds. So that assumption holds if you select based upon equation eight. So in a way, everything fits now. So this is the bound on the regret. So again, they say that if you select your lambda from, zero to 0 0.5 and lambda tilde uh, according to this, then with this probability, the, the regret is bounded by this expression. So in a, they wanted to show a theoretical guarantee on the, on the regret. So that the proof is a bit involved. So I have not gone through that. So, so now these are the experiments which they conducted. So the first one is synthetic experiment. So generally what they do is uh, they generate d-dimensional feature vectors uh, with equal weight. And so how do they generate? So initially they generate a pseudo vector for each key term from a uniform distribution. And for each item, then they, uh, then they choose key terms uniformly from K without replacement. And then each dimension of XA is drawn from this normal distribution. So basically like say you chose uh, five vectors, five pseudo vectors, then you take mean of them and you draw the individual dimension from a normal distribution corresponding to that mean and a particular Sigma, which they chose. So I think they chose uh, Sigma 0.1. Yeah, so they chose sigma point one. So they again the users were generated and their uh, ground truth. So the preferences were drawn from again a uniform distribution. And uh, these true arm level reward and key level reward were calculated based upon these equations, where epsilon is again normally distributed. So they also like to compare against certain algos. So they had some baselines. So they used linear UCB. So they do, uh, these algos don't have a conversational part, but all these last three experiments like variation of RS. So this has a random key selection component. And similarly, these two are other variants where the key selection strategy is not what they used. So they compared their algo with these five and uh, they ran the experiments 10 time and took average. So the results were something like this. So the first diagram here in A, it shows that effect of uh, BT. So you, you can see if you can ask more questions, the regret is less. So uh, the first function is the ceiling of log of T. The second is five, 10. So effectively the number of questions you can ask in say t rounds are increasing and correspondingly the regrets is decreasing for all the systems and the orange is their system so it's minimum in 
uh, all uh, against all the systems itself. So even the even the diagram B is something similar. Instead of log, they have the normal ceiling function. Again, there is a pool size effect shown here. So pool size is basically at every stage, you will be selecting number of arms to choose from. So if you increase that pool size, it takes more time to learn and correspondingly the regret is high. So th this is a synthetic experiment they did. Then they did two more experiments on Yelp data set and uh, this Tao Tiao news data set. So I, I'm not covering the Yelp data set results here. So in this experiment, uh, they had like 2000 users, 1.7 million articles and say 8.4 million interaction records. So article here is an arm again, the categories can be say for a given article, say it's news car or news sports or something. So in total, there were 573 categories and there were keywords like uh, 2384 keywords. So categories and keywords are a bit different, but uh, in this formulation, uh, finally, they combine categories and keywords into uh, what, uh, what is the key in our framework. So contextual vector is 100 dimensional. Uh, this is derived from all the features and finally uh, applying PCA on that. And the feedback is simple, whether uh, the user reads one or zero if he doesn't read. And user preference, uh, so the user preference is generated based upon the interaction records. So you already have the interaction records of the user. Based upon that, you can learn the theta parameter. So uh, these are the results. So these are the, so the first uh, figure, it shows the cumulative regret on synthetic data set. So you can see these are the uh, six systems used here. So the red one is their system and the regret is the lowest in this one. And so basically it, it learns the effective recommendation much more quickly and with close to the user preference. The second is like, how accurate the learned parameters are. Since we know the parameters, so this was, uh, uh, so again, if you see the red one, it is, it is showing much less error. So effectively, these parameters are much closer to the actual ones. And the third figure is the similar analysis on the Yelp data set here. Again, their system works better. The fourth one is on the uh, news data set. And here, instead of regret, they have plotted against the uh, click-through rate. So that's why their click-through rate is high. So in this formulation, higher is better. So effectively, they show that uh, their approach of incorporating the conversation based upon key values uh, helps in recommending and making the learning process quicker. So yeah. So these are the two conclusions and I have not covered one part where they show how to incorporate their, their approach into other algorithms where they have shown like how to adapt this easily for hidden linear UCB algorithm. So in hidden, you have some hidden features as well as so those latent features can be also incorporated. And so this approach like makes it very easy to adapt for other uh, contextual bandit algos. Similarly, it can be also used for uh, other like Thompson sampling algo, which is used for finding the optimal strategy. So most of the proofs are there in appendix bitmaps heavy. So yeah, that's all from my side. So if any part is not clear, we can go through that again or if someone wants to summarize or something. So uh, let's first thank Sunil for giving the presentation. Thank you. Okay, and um, uh, do we have any questions? I think we had a, a really nice round of um, conversation and questioning by our supporter groups. And uh, thanks to both of you for doing a very nice job of dialogue.
Thank you.、Uh, I have one question. So, apart from the theoretical proof, what do you think is the main contribution of this paper? Main contribution,、uh, they. Yes, what is it? It's like、uh, incorporating the conversation. But、uh, there are other papers also which incorporates the conversational aspect in recommended system. So、uh, in their case, they show that incorporating the key value、uh, based information is is helping the system. So they are the first one to use this、uh, key value based answering. Yes,、system. as as per them, it, they are the first one and okay published in April. Yes. Yes. Then I have one question. So.、Uh, You are choosing from a pool of key values. That、yes. pool of key values is predetermined.、Yes. Where does it from? Does it? So it's like most、uh, say if you are in the news recommender system,、uh, every article is generally tagged with certain key values. So it's from so, that pool. Yes. So that that is a pool that is predetermined, and you have to search for a large enough pool to contain all the possible key values. Is that true? Uh, like who has to search, right?、Uh, yeah, you are choosing from somewhere.、Uh, that that、uh, that is a close set. So that set has to come from somewhere. So did they mention in the paper like how do they choose this set? Because I think this set will largely affect the quality of the question and answering.、Uh, and that set that 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 set seems a bit.、Uh, you you mean you mean to say、uh, like the selection of the entire K or the K yeah, at a the, particular time instant. Uh, the selection of the entire K because the selection for selection, time instance has been mentioned in equation eight, right? Selection of entire K generally, like in both of the、uh, say experiments, it comes with the data. Like say in Yelp data set, it comes the it all the restaurants they come with certain tags. So similarly, in the news data, they comes with categories. So no one is manually adding something extra. But if you are say starting from scratch without those labels, then if it, yeah, definitely you have to think like which key makes sense, like which will be、uh, informative in that sense. You cannot so they, just you cannot so, just randomly.、Right. Yeah. So they pre-process the. Yeah, it, so you can say like most of the the data points came with certain tags, so it's like the、uh, that metadata was used, right? Right. So I think the the key point here is that Yi Ching is pointing out that you know、uh, the key set is a closed set; it must be predetermined by the algorithm or or given as input, and dynamically the key set is not able to change. So、uh, it's not a.、Yeah. It's not, Capable of some of the other things that we've seen in other weeks, where you know you have a copy mechanism or something like that that allows you to introduce new values that are unseen to the algorithm. So、um, this is a good point. I think the other point that、uh, you you know you should take away from this paper, aside from the theoretical guarantees, is、um, the idea of the formulation of the task, right? Which is、yes. to say, you know, you get、uh, a certain number of questions per round, and、uh, these influence how much. Um, uh, uh, you know what you can can do. So it's a very different、uh, problem setting from、uh, the other ear paper that we saw last week by Yi Song, which、uh, allows you to make this type of decision at every time point, right? So you're you're getting a window of time. You're、uh, allowed to ask a certain number of questions, and then you have to decide optimally what to do. Okay. So、um, it's、uh, actually quite long. So I know there's a lot of Math in this paper, and it's hard to digest for people seeing it for the first time. But I think、uh, both of you did a great job. So、uh, let's put our hands together again. You can do it virtually, or、uh, you can unmute. Either way is fine.、Uh, and so we'll、uh, move to our next presenter. Uh, so uh, thanks, Sunil and、uh, Yiching, for doing the duties for the paper. Yeah, I think I will be the next.、Uh, yeah, yeah, I think、uh, you saw. Can you guys、uh, see my? Yeah, it's coming in now. Can you guys、yep. see my see my screen?、Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I first, want to thank Prof Ming for hosting the the our reading group so that I got a chance to to first to、uh, to practice talking about this paper for the first time. Right. So、uh, 
And this paper is entitled uh, Interactive Path Reasoning on Graph for Conversational Recommendation. It is accepted to candidate this year. And, and in this paper, I, I took a, a more uh, supporting role than never done before. And I only gave advice to experiment design and I only wrote like uh, three or four sections of this paper. And I uh, am a co-author of this paper. I'm not the primary author. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm, but I'm still very happy to, uh, to, to advocate our work. Mm. Our project website is also listed here, including all the codes and data, and you guys can try, try to improve our work uh, upon our code basis. Okay, so uh, let's have a very quick uh, 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 catch up. I think uh, Jiaqi Zheng, I think Jiaqi is also here today, has uh, introduced uh, uh, this multi-round conversational recommendation scenario uh, last week. So very quick catch up. So uh, the objective of such multi-round scenario is very simple, is to accurately recommend items to users in shortest terms, right? So, uh, so uh, let's also go through this graph. Uh, the session will be initiated by the user who uh, uh, initiated by the attribute he likes, then the system uh, gets to take action. Uh, it has to decide uh, whether to ask attributes or recommend items, right? And later the user gets the, the, the prompt from the system, then, then the user needs to respond. The user's response uh, has two types. The first type is to directly reject or accept the recommendation or the user could uh, reply to the attributes the system is asking. So here is from the loop, and this loop will be only be stopped when the recommendation is successful or the user quits the, uh, the, the session. So here, uh, another reiteration about the main objective uh, is to successfully recommend the item the user in shortest terms. And we have also, you know, to, uh, to, to have a, a uh, a formulation of this uh, key research questions. So we have decomposed the objective into three questions. The first question is uh, what item to recommend, and here is its formulation. Second question is the uh, what attributes to ask, and here's the formulation. And third question is what is the strategy to ask and recommend, and here's also the formulation, right? So, um, uh, Based upon these three key research questions, we have our first piece of work, uh, which is uh, introduced by Jiaqi Zheng uh, last week. So uh, the, the, the first piece of work is called uh, year, estimation action reflection uh, in, in the wisdom this year. So uh, in year system, uh, it is composed of two components. On the left-hand side, we have the uh, recommender com component which is responsible to, to answer uh, what items to recommend, what attributes to ask. And, then, and then on the right-hand side, we have the conversational component, uh, which is responsible to, to, to decide uh, uh, what action to take. And here, uh, this paper's main contribution is to, 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 have a, 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 to propose a mechanism to, uh, to leverage on the interaction between these two components. Uh, uh, the statistics from the uh, RC helps the decision of the CC, and the dialogue history from the, the conversation also helps the recommender component. Uh, after we have done this work, we have uh, our team has found uh, a two uh, main limitation of the year system, uh, which uh, motivates us on, on this paper. The first limitation is that the year system has a very large action space for the RL model. Uh, if you guys have a, a, a good memory about our year work, so the RL model, reinforcement learning model in year work uh, has an action space like the 30 or 40. Uh, the RL model is responsible to decide not only uh, whether to ask or whether to recommend, it is also responsible to, to decide what question to recommend. Hence, it got a action space of one plus uh, the size of the, the attribute space. So, as I mean, the burden for the reinforcement learning module is too heavy, right? So in this work, we are going to re relieve the burden. 
And the second limitation of the year system is that we know that there are rich structural information of user item attributes, and we totally uh, abandon this uh, structural information. So in total, uh, we adopt a, a KG uh, knowledge graph constraints in our CPR framework to, uh, to improve or overcome uh, these two uh, main limitations as in the year uh, system. Okay, so in this page, uh, I'm going to have a, a very intuitive introduction about our uh, CPR framework. CPR stands for Conversational Path Reasoning, right? So uh, a very intuitive example. Uh, so let's first come to the uh, left-hand side. You can see that the user wants the dance music artist and the system asks, do you like rock music? The user responds, yes. The system then asks, do you like pop music? The user also responds, yes. Finally, the, the system recommends Michael Jackson, right? So, uh, so this is on the left-hand side about the conversation session. Well, on the uh, right-hand side, this is the knowledge graph. So uh, talking about the knowledge graph, you know, uh, I know uh, in our Zoom meeting room, there are many experts in, on the knowledge graph like that mean, right? So, uh, so I, I'm not an expert in knowledge graph, but to simply put, uh, a knowledge graph is composed of uh, two main components. Um, the first components are, are those nodes. The second components are those edges, right? So in this graph, we just, I mean, to transform a, a conversation recommendation data set into a, into a knowledge graph. And all these nodes, we have three types of nodes. Uh, the first type of nodes are pink shaded. They are the users, right? The, the user named Alice, Tom, Thomas, right? And the second types of nodes are blue shaded. And they are the nodes of the, 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 the items. Here in this data set, the items are all artists like Halu, uh, Walker Christ, Simon Circuit, right? They're, they're the items. And the third types of the nodes are the, those attributes which are yellow shaded, right? We have the dance, rock, pop, right? So now please follow me to uh, look into the, this knowledge graph. What does it present, right? So first, uh, Tom starts the session and he, he told the system that he wants something about the dance, right? So then when the system confirms that Tom would also like to drop, so, uh, so the path has transited from the dance to rock, right? So when the system has uh, confirmed that the Tom also like rock, so the path has transited from rock to pop. So finally, the system feel confidence to make recommendation and he recommend Michael Jackson, right? So now we can see that Michael Jackson is actually a, a node which connects all these attributes together, right? You can see Michael Jackson is a nodes which connects the dance, connects the rock, connects the pop, right? So this is basically how this intuition work. So, um, so to clarify, um, uh, the, the, the path here only means a path making up with uh, the, 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 the nodes of attributes. The path is on the dance, rock, and pop. So the path here means a path of attributes, right? Okay. So on the seventh page of my presentation, I'm going to have a, a overview of our uh, uh, computational framework, right? So let's first uh, uh, so focus- We want to try to move a little faster because I'm worried we're going to run out of time. So- uh, yeah. Okay, let's, okay. Let's sure. let you know. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be fast. Okay, so on the, on the uh, right-hand side, we can see the uh, CPR framework. We have the three stages, the reasoning, consultation, and the transition, right? So I think the consultation stage and transition stage are very straightforward. So I'm going to have a more emphasis on the first stage, on the reasoning stage. So here, again, uh, let's zoom in to the graph and, and we can see uh, how this works, right? So the user uh, uh, initiated with the, the, the attribute P0, then to the P1, then, then, then the system feel confident to make recommendation about the V5. V5 is the attributes, right? So here, uh, the, the key innovation here is that information could propagate between item and attribute, right? So here, the, 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 
the yellow dash, uh, sorry, the yellow arrow, the, the yellow arrow here uh, means the information propagated from the item to uh, from from attributes to the to the attribute, uh, sorry, from the uh, from attributes to item, right? So here, the blue arrow uh, indicates the information propagated from item to attributes, right? So here, uh, the information flows between them. So how do we uh, uh, computationally uh, define such information flow, right? Uh, we instantiate our CPR ideology into a simple CPR model, uh, which we call our SCPR model. Mm, so, so let's first uh, focus on the, on, the, on the middle column. The middle column has the, the message propagate from the attributes to item, right? We directly borrow the, uh, the, 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 the calculation from our year paper. In the year paper, we take into account the, the so far known attribute to, to estimate users' uh, preference towards a unknown attribute, a known item, right? So we directly borrow the calculation from year paper to, to, to have the message propagation from attributes items, right? So on the right-hand side, we have the message propagation from items to attributes. So here, we adopt a information attribute strategy and so it is different from the traditional uh, uh, traditional uh, entropy calculation, which which uh, uh, which treats all items equal. We, we don't treat all items equal. We think that those items has a higher higher score would have a higher importance. So here uh, we take into the the, the 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 item score from the previous stage into account and have a weighted attribute information and entropy and calculate here. So the maximum entropy uh, uh, of the attributes would be the most likely attribute to ask in the next term. So this is the reasoning stage. And here is the consultation stage. Consultation stage is very, very straightforward. Uh, the, the, this stage is only to decide whether to ask and whether to recommend. So which implies that, that the, the um, the output space of the policy network is only two, right? One is the, to, to recommend and the other is to, to ask question. And as for the, the state factor is quite identical, identical to that in, in our year paper, only that we, we have uh, abandoned the two terms of because we think these terms are all encoded in, in the, uh, in the uh, with entropy and also uh, here we, we adopted a standard uh, DQN method to optimize our uh, policy. The, the reason that we change from the policy gradient to the DQN method is that the, the deep Q learning method uh, does not require any pre-training and we think it could uh, sp speed up of the training stage. And here the policy, I think uh, everyone here should have a background about the, 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 some uh, reinforcement learning background you know, the, the Q learning is to, to maximize the, the, the sum of the Q value, right? And we also adopt a standard uh, temporal difference loss to, to, to optimize the, the, uh, the policy network, right? So regarding the experiments, uh, it, it is also very similar to the year paper. And here, year also serves as a baseline in the experiments. The only difference is that uh, besides the, the, the two data set as used in the original paper, we adopt a two new setting like the last FM star and Yob star. And why do we need such star uh, data set is that uh, the star data set means we directly use the original attributes as in the original data set. So uh, as just she uh, introduced last week, uh, last FM and Yelp data set in the year paper, we have a two layer taxonomy to, to I mean, to reduce those uh, uh, attributes from very large space to, to, to a smaller space to do the experiments. So here, as we have the knowledge, knowledge graph, why not we directly to evaluate our, our, our framework on the original data set, right? So the key difference here is that the last FM start data set has a much higher 
uh, attribute space compared with the last FM, it has the 8,000 8, more attributes compared to the 33 as in the last FM. So here is the experiment result. All the matrices in the process are very much similar to the year paper. And I would just focus on the difference and the interesting parts. We can see that SCPR work uh, shows an advantage in both settings. The interesting part is that the more attributes, the more advantage SCPR could achieve. And we can see on the right-hand side that uh, the, on the last FM star data set uh, and the YAP star data set, uh, the SCPR work has a much higher uh, uh, performance advantage compared with year data set. More interesting is that um, both year and CRM uh, algorithm has a, has a lower performance compared with the rule based work like CRM, uh, sorry, like max entropy and absolute greedy. The reason is that given this very large action space, this is uh, not uh, practical for this system to, to, to learn a good uh, policy given this large action space. And the second research question is on the ablation study. Um, to verify our key design on our CPR work, I've devised a variation of our SCPR called SCPR-V. Um, in this variation, all the, uh, I mean, all the components are the, all are the same, except that the, the RIO model has a, has a larger space, which is the same as in the year system. So uh, SCPR-V can be seen as intermediate version between year and SCPR. For SCPR, the action space is not so focused, right? And for year, um, it can be helped by the KG constraints. And we can see that as we uh, expected, the SCPR-V uh, performs better than year and inferior to SCPR. And finally, we want to, to see if uh, our, uh, our framework can bring more explainable and easy to interpret reasoning path, right? So we randomly sampled one uh, uh, conversation session from the last FM data set. And as we can see on the left hand side, uh, we can see that SCPR work has a very, I mean, uh, coherent and, uh, and, uh, and a reasonable conversation flow, right? It's initiated like the met metacore music that it responds to the hardcore, then the, the, the following question as the post hardcore, and finally push the recommendation as that's the fall, right? And on the contrary, on the year, year system has a, I mean, a not so coherent conversation. Uh, following the metacore, it responds to alternative music, then later scene line, the southern rock is a not so coherent. And, and all these questions, user response with no, right? So the, the conversation session also fails. To sum it up, uh, this work has, uh, I mean, uh, 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 from my perspective, has two major contribution. The, the first contribution is on the graph constraints. And according to the experiments, it does help. Uh, the graph constraints can help ask better questions to bring coherent conversation and the path is also bring explainability. And also the second constraints is on the RL model has a more uh, dedicated uh, action space, which can bring help to, to, to better decision-making, especially in a, a large action space made up of uh, a very large action, uh, a very large attribute space. Yeah, and that's me. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Yi Song, for giving a, a, a presentation on your co authored work uh, with Wen Chang and, and all the rest of the team. So um, I think we have yeah. time for some questions, especially from our support group. So I think uh, the support group had uh, decided that certain people would be responsible for some <laughs> particular papers. So uh, I'm wondering uh, for the supporter for this particular paper, I think it's, uh, is it Anab, uh, whether you guys have any question? Yeah. Uh, hi. So uh, maybe I I have a question. 
uh, yeah, so uh, in this paper, uh, this uh, what I get is this knowledge graphs uh, will help the system, uh, yeah, to limit the action uh, space. Uh, am I right? Uh, and uh, I'm wondering, is there any like uh, benefit, more benefit uh, to incorporate this knowledge knowledge graph for uh, as knowledge graph? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, sorry, I, I, sorry, I didn't quite catch you. You mean, uh, so you're questioning the, you're asking the benefit uh, brought by the knowledge graph, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so um, okay, so so let's come come to this graph, right? So sorry, I, I think I'm going to switch here for higher resolution uh, graph, right? Bigger. So here, the uh, uh, I think maybe I have a. Uh, uh, I have forgotten one point to brought up is, is that um, here another constraint here is the 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 next attribute the next attribute to ask must be a adjacent attribute uh, of the current attributes. So I think this is the a, a very good uh, a benefit brought by the knowledge graph. Meaning that so so now we we have I mean many nodes on the knowledge graph. And the system might be at loss which attributes us next, right? So maybe it is a good idea to only ask on the adjacent attributes. Yeah. So, so, so here, uh, the P1 is a adjacent attributes of P0, and this, this, the system can only ask uh, to, only to choose among all these adjacent attributes to ask. Right? I think it, I think it's a very good constraint. I answer your question, Anab? Sorry? Does that answer? Oh, yeah, your... yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Anab. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and actually, I have uh, one more question. So, sure. uh, if, uh, if, uh, can you go to the, uh, the, page, uh, the slide where uh, you show the, the comparison between the SCPR and the ER? Here. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, I think you uh, refer to this page. Yeah. Oh no no. Uh, the 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 example of the conversation. Here. Right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. yeah so, yeah. So, uh, uh, I I'm also wondering like uh, we can see that uh, the conversation uh, for the ear system like give completely wrong conversation and recommendation right. Uh, compared to um, the SCPR. Yeah. 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 yeah but uh, but uh, when I see uh. Uh, at the paper on table two, like uh, I see that the performance of ear and SP SCPR uh, is somewhat similar. Uh, on table two, yeah. So uh, I, I'm just wondering, yeah. yeah, yeah, this one, uh, yeah, the ER and SCPR, the for last FM, uh, yeah, because the, the example is uh, based on last FM data set, yeah. So uh, yeah. We, we can see that the the, uh, the performance is somewhat similar, but uh, they saw the examples, oh, yeah, it's like yeah. a completely wrong. So yeah, I, I'm just yeah. wondering why, why is that so? Well, yeah, I think maybe this example is chosen from the last FM star data set, which, uh, which has uh, much more attributes. Mm, oh, I see, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think maybe I can refer to, to, to let me have a check. Uh, well, I, I think uh, this this, uh, this example is, cho is chosen from the last FM star data set, uh, mm. which has a much higher att attribute space. Yeah. Oh yeah. So the yeah. yeah okay. Okay. I got it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I also have a question. So, uh, yeah. you know, we, we are talking about a knowledge graph based system for helping mm -hmm. to reason. Um, could we say anything about the quality of the knowledge graph uh, when we are talking about the uh, amount of gain the system produces over ear? Ear is basically not using a knowledge graph at all. So, yeah. um, if we have a bad knowledge graph or one that's incomplete, uh, we would expect uh, your your uh, uh, SCPR system not to do particularly well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could we say that for uh, queries or simulated turns where 
uh, your system does much better than ear, uh, we could infer something about the quality of the knowledge graph um, in that region. So like say for this example that you're showing here, uh, perhaps knowledge graph uh, is quite um, densely defined or has very good quality mm -hmm. edges. Could we say mm -hmm. anything about that? Well, yeah. Thanks, Prof. Ming, for your question. Well, um, I think, um, uh, okay, so I think the short answer here is that there might not be such implication that the, uh, the higher quality of the knowledge graph, the, the higher gain would be achieved by the uh, CPR work. Um, the, the answer here is that, so um, I think the, uh, the main the main leverage used by the CPR framework is on the is on the constraints uh, on those attributes, right? And I think uh, even if uh, oh, I mean a worsely constructed uh, knowledge graph would still have these attributes connected to each other, right? So um, uh, I mean only if the attributes could be connected with each other. Uh, and so, so the path could, could be walked on these on these attributes, and I don't think there would be much uh, performance drop. Well, um, but I still think that uh, when there are more attributes, that there would be more uh, gain brought by 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 the CPA framework, as have been shown in our experiments. Have I answered your question? Would your system benefit yeah. from uh, using a, another uh, reasoning me methodology? So incorporating something like a graph convolutional network that allows you to see well, yeah. beyond one edge, would that help as well? Well, well, yeah, I think you have raised a good question. Yeah, so, so, so in this work, we, I mean, we haven't adopted, I mean, recently very popular uh, methods like uh, GCN or other uh, graph embeddings. Yeah. So I think may maybe if we need to use these methods, uh, our uh, if we are using this graph embedding methods, the quality of the knowledge graph would be very important because uh, I mean uh, those sparsely connected uh, uh, graphs could be su suffering. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Anab, and uh, thanks, Isang, for presenting. So uh, given the time constraints that we have, uh, we'll uh, pass on to uh, Hannah for her presentation. Uh, yeah, I'm going to stop my sharing. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, can, you, can you see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will begin my presentation. Okay. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, this is Cao Hanan. Today, I'm going to present this paper towards uh, com conversational recommendation over multi-type dialogues. Uh, so in this paper, it mainly first introduced um, uh, with the rest of voice based bots most research in conversational recommendation system has been focused on uh, how to provide high quality recommendations through dialogue based interaction with users and they mainly fall into two categories uh, one is the task oriented dialogue modeling approach and the other is the non-task dialogue modeling approach with small free form of interactions however almost all of the work have been focused on a single type of dialogue and uh, they assume that both sides in the dialogue, especially from the for the user in the dialogue, uh, they are aware of the conversation goal from the beginning. So this is not the case in the real world application. In the real world application, there are multiple dialogue types like chit chat, task oriented dialogues, recommendation dialogue and the Q&A. And the user usually does not know the conversational goal. So the author here wants to study how, how to naturally make conversation recommendation by the bots in the context of multi-type human bot in, uh, communication. So to, to solve this problem, they uh, present the novel task 
they identified the, the task of conversation recommendation over multi-type dialogues. And they also provide a novel uh, dialogue data set, which is called uh, DURIC DIAL uh, with rich variability of dialogue types and the domains. And they also propose a novel uh, conversation generation framework called multi goal driven conversation generation framework, which is short for MGCG uh, for their uh, provide a uh, proposed data set. Uh, so in this new task, they also want to uh, want the bot to proactively and naturally lead a conversation from a non-recommendation dialogue to a recommendation dialogue. During this process, the goal is unknown to the user. So for the example shown uh, in in the right hand side, uh, so given a start dial a starting dialogue such as question answering, the bot can take into account user's interest to determine a recommendation target. Uh, this one uh, recommending the movie, the message uh, as a long-term goal. And then it drafts the con uh, conversation in a natural way by following short-term goals and uh, complete each goal in the end. Uh, here, each goal specify a dialogue type and the dialogue topic. In this example, uh, so different color just represent its team, uh, different short-term goals. So to further illustrate this task, uh, let me show you some more details about uh, this conversational recommendation. So actually the whole dialogue is grounded on the knowledge graph under the user profile and the goal sequence, uh, which is this part. Well, the goal sequence is planned by uh, the board with consideration of user's interest and the topic transition natural, uh, naturally. So the author just uh, following their initial intuition, they defined one person in the dialogue as a recommendation seeker, which is the role of user. And the other is the recommender, the role of the bot. And they asked the recommender to proactively lead the dialogue and then make recommendation with the consideration of the seeker's interest instead of a seeker to ask recommendation from the recommender. So in order to collect this data, they, uh, they have collected the secrets profile and the knowledge graph and the task template. Uh, based on these three information, they have also carried out some annotation of the dialogue data. For the secrets profile and the knowledge graph, they just let each seeker equipped with an automatically generated ground truth profile and ask the seeker to make conversation that consistent with their profile. So in this way, it allows the recommender to acquire secrets profile uh, through the dialogue. And then the task template is mainly used for helping the user to annotate in a way that the author uh, expected to be. Uh, so this is a example of the task template as shown in this table. Each template contains two elements, the goal sequence and the, a detailed description of the goal. Whereby the goal sequence consists of two elements, a dialogue type and a and the dialogue topic, which uh, correspond to a sub dialogue. Uh, and then the annotation of dialogue data is the step where we can get the final data set from. So it mainly works by pairing up the task workers and uh, give each of them a role of a seeker and a recommender. Then two workers conduct data annotation with the help of task template, seekers profile, and the knowledge graph. Uh, before introducing the framework of this paper, let me briefly introduce some of the notations they have used. So the DSK here just represent the set of dialogue by the seeker SK. And the NDSK is the number of dialogue by, by the seeker. And the NS is the total number of seeker. P, uh, PISK is the seeker's profile. And the G is a set of uh, uh, goal sequence. So each goal is a G, a GT here. And uh, uh, this set of UT is the uh, utterance. The K represents the knowledge graph. And the Y uh, is a proper sequence for completion of each goal GC. Uh, so uh, from my understanding, so Y0, Y1, YN are just the uh, dialogue that the system has generated. 
so the problem formulation here is to uh, given a uh, context X with the alternates UG from the dialogue, uh, dialogue DSK and the uh, goal history G, PSK and the K. The aim is to provide a appropriate goal GC to determine where the dialogue goes and then produce a proper response Y for the completion of the goal GC. So here is an overview of their MGCG framework the goal planning model also puts the goal to proactively and naturally lead the conversation. Uh, so it first take as uh, it first takes as input x, g zero, k, and uh, p s k, and then the output g c. The responding model is responsible for completion of each goal by producing uh, responses conditioned on x, g c, and the k. Uh, so when training the model, each pair of context and the response in the DSK is paired with its ground truth goal, PSK and the K. These elements will be used as the answer for training the goal planning model and the tuples of context, ground truth goal, K and the response will be used for training of the response model. Uh, I will now go through them in details. So in the goal planning part, they divided the task of goal planning into two subtasks, the goal completion estimation and the current goal prediction. In the goal completion estimation, for these subtasks, they use the CNN to estimate the probability of goal completion by this formula. And in the current goal prediction, it uses predicted the probability from, uh, from the goal completion estimation. So if the uh, GT minus one is not completed, uh, which, which can be shown by uh, probability of GC, this one uh, less than 0 0.5. Uh, in this case, GC is set to GT minus one, where GC is the goal for Y. Otherwise they use the CN based multitask classification to predict the current goal by maximizing this probability. Uh, in the um, so it's a probability of uh, GP, uh, the probability of uh, GTY, GTP given X, uh, G prime, P, I, S, K, and the K. So uh, here the GTY is the candidate dialogue type, and the GTP is a candidate dialogue topic. So for the uh, retrieval based response model. Their response ranker consists of five components. Component one is a context response representation model, the CR encoder. Component two is a knowledge representation model, the knowledge encoder. Component three is a goal representation model, the goal encoder. Uh, component four is a knowledge selection model, which is the knowledge selector. And the component five is a matching model. Uh, okay, so component one, uh, it has the same architecture as BERT. So it takes uh, input X and the candidate response Y as input. And it produces a joint representation of X and Y as the XY here by leveraging the stacked self attention. And each of the related knowledge is also used uh, to, uh, it's also encoded as a, as a vector by the knowledge encoder using the bidirectional GRU here. And for the goal encoder, which is the component three, it encodes a dialogue type and a dialogue topic for the goal representation GC. And for the knowledge selection, they let the context representation XY to attend to all the knowledge vector KI and get the attention distribution uh, shown here. And uh, all the related knowledge information are fused into a single vector KC by this formula. The matching probability for each y is calculated by the uh, by this formula. So uh, x uh, so in for this formula x uh, x y k c and g c here are concatenated into a single vector, and they are viewed as the information from the knowledge source, the goal source, and the and the dialogue source respectively. For the generator, it also consists of five parts. Uh, the part one is the context encoder, 
Part two is the knowledge encoder. Part three is the goal encoder. And the part four is the knowledge selector. Part five is the decoder. Component one will take the context X, uh, conversation goal GC, and the knowledge graph K as input and encode them as a vector. The generator here make use of three training losses, the KL divergence loss, uh, negative log likelihood loss, and the BOW loss, the back of word loss. The author assume that using the correct response will be conducive to knowledge selection. Therefore, minimizing the KL divergence loss will make the effect of knowledge selection in the previous states close to that of knowledge selection with the correct response. So the also calculate the KL divergent loss between the prior, uh, prior distribution, the property of KI given X and the GC, and the posterior distribution, which is this one, the property of KI given X, Y, and the GC. And the KL divergent loss is calculated uh, between them. So moving on to the back of forward loss, the reason why they introduced the back of forward loss is that they want to ensure the accuracy of the field's knowledge KC by enforcing the relevancy between the knowledge and the true response. Uh, in, the, uh, okay, in the equation here, the author let W equals to uh, MLP of KC. So MLP here is just uh, uh, the neural network so uh, the output is a v-dimensional vector. The v here is the vocabulary size, and they define the probability of probability, uh, probability of yt given kc is equal to this part. And the BOW loss is defined uh, to define as the negative the summation of the negative uh, log probability. And the total loss function is defined to be uh, alpha times the loss of KL divergence uh, plus the alpha times uh, negative log likelihood and uh, plus the back of four loss. Uh, the, the alpha here in the loss function is a trainable parameter. So it's not a hyperparameter. Uh, so for the experiment part, uh, they, carry, uh, they carry out the experiment on their data set and uh, they, the, they split the data set into train, dev, test by randomly sampling 65% sampling of them into train set, 10% of them into the dev set, and 25% of them in the test set uh, at the level of seekers. Uh, the S to S here is a vanilla sequence to sequence model, which is widely used for the open domain conversation generation. The I'm, uh, MGCGR here is their system with automatic goal planning and, uh, a, tri and uh, a trivial based responding model. And the MGCG here is uh, their model with automatic goal planning and the generation based response model. So they have reported the result on blue F1 perplexity and uh, uh, distinct to measure their relevancy fluency and the diversity of the generated response. Besides, they also uh, reported the score on uh, uh, his one and the his three. In this experiment, they let each model to select the best response from a, ten, a list of 10 candidates. Those 10 candidates uh, consist of one ground truth response generated by the human, and then I randomly sampled the response from the training set. So for, uh, from this experiment, they have discovered that uh, firstly, the MGCGR and the MGCGG can outperform sequence to sequence uh, by a large margin in terms of all the matrices. Uh, secondly, the MGCGR performs better than um, better in terms of his, uh, his K and uh, this take two, but it, it is worse in terms of uh, F1 compared to the MC, MGCGG. Uh, so th this, this may be explained by that they are optimized by different matrices. And they also find out methods using goal and the knowledge or perform those without goal and the knowledge. Uh, this, confirm, this confirm the benefit of goal and the knowledge as the guidance information. 
for the 10 level human evaluation, the author asks each model to produce a response condition on a given context, the predicted goal and the related knowledge. The generated response are evaluated by the three annotators in terms of fluency, appropriate, appropriateness, informativeness, and the proactivity. For each model, they select, uh, select 100 dialogues. These dialogues are then evaluated by the three persons in terms of two matrices. First is the goal success rate that measure how well the conversation goal is achieved. And second is the uh, coherence that measures relevance and the fluence of the dialogue as a whole. So all the matrices has three grids, uh, two uh, means good, fair means one, and the bad, uh, bad is zero. So actually the two here indicate the model introduced new topics that is relevant to the context. And the one uh, means that there's no new topics introduced, but the knowledge is used. Uh, and zero here means the model introduced new but irrelevant topics. Also, their system, they all perform the uh, seek to seek by a large margin, especially in terms of appro appropriativeness, informativeness, and the goal success rate and the coherence. Both of these two systems produce more appropriate and informative response. And the retrieval based model performs better in terms of fluency since its response is selected from the original human utterance. Uh, and it is not automatically generated. The author uh, here also analyzed the relationship between the knowledge use, usage and the goal completion. So they provide the number of failed goals, completed goals, and the use knowledge for each method over different dialogue types. From this table, we observe that the number of success, uh, uh, the number of use knowledge is proportional to the goal success rate across across different dialogue types or different methods. It is also quite obvious that the goal of chit chat dialogue is easier to complete in comparison comparison with others. And the QA and the recommendation dialogue are more challenging to complete. Uh, this is my presentation today. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Um, yeah, yeah and I can ask a question. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm, hi, hi, I'm Yi yeah. And my question is that, so uh, uh, after a quick reading about this paper, I'm a little bit confused that why they, uh, I mean, propose two types of model. One is retrieval based, another is generation based. And, and their experiment, I haven't seen a very clear, I mean, a comparison or intuitive explanation for them. So my question is that, uh, which one do you like? And, or, or say, which one is more applicable or practical? Yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, so if I understand this paper correctly, so I think mm -hmm. uh, basically yeah. the difference between the retrieval-based mm -hmm. response and the generation-based response model, it's, yeah. uh, so retrieval-based model is more like they make selection mm -hmm. from a few candidates and mm -hmm. the generation-based model is like, uh, I think it's more like a sequence to sequence model. So it will generate the sentence mm -hmm. by itself. So uh, I think in the real case, I more prefer with generation-based models as, yeah, you know, uh, in, the re uh, in the real world, we cannot select from a list of mm -hmm. sentences mm -hmm. and they have, uh, they have reported their, I think it's, uh, wait, let me, let me find the mm -hmm. result. Okay, no hurry. Okay, so, so here, so they made some simple comparison between the mm -hmm. uh, re, retrieval base mm -hmm. and the generation base. So mm -hmm. retrieval yeah. base, so it has higher, uh, his K and uh, this this thing too, but mm -hmm. actually I don't I I'm I'm not familiar with these two matrices, <laughs> and uh, I think the the higher the better I think. Okay okay, and uh, mm -hmm. actually uh, the generation model has a better F one, so it has a better uh, I think it has a better uh, fluency 
Yeah, I mean, I think the result is not intuitive enough <laughs> for us to to interpret. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think uh, Yusong has a good point. I mean, they introduced two different subsystems for uh, generating a response, right? An abstractive system and a retrieval system. So it's a little bit like uh, what we see in other work where you have a in summarization or other systems where you can do extraction or you can do abstraction, right? You can either create your own response or use the rank and, and choose a response from other people, right? Uh, Xin Yuan, you had a, a question, uh, so please go ahead. Um, actually, at first, uh, I want to say like a few words about this paper, maybe uh, like a, a pre limitary uh, sum summary of this paper. I think this um, paper's goal is quite interesting because the current uh, um, human machine uh, conversation is uh, like uh, mostly based on one type of uh, task, for example, like uh, quest, uh, QA or recommendation or just a chit chat. I think uh, 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 they propose like a new goal that is to combine uh, there's three types of type of task together, which is uh, like more uh, similar to like human human uh, conversation. Because uh, the in the in the real world uh, conversation, it is uh, like o open open domain, and so I think their uh, their general idea is to first uh, uh, first propose like three uh, type of uh, task, uh, and then uh, based on each type of Task I like they first select which uh, task is uh, uh, is uh, with so, and they first select uh, which is uh, the, the one task we want to solve and then based on the task they propose whether to uh, for example recommendation or generation and I think this uh, the main idea uh, or the main contribution of this uh, idea is to like proactively lead the the users, uh, the, 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 the goal of the conversation, uh, like in order, uh, uh, rather than one type of goal. And I think uh, I have a like a little question, not uh, just uh, uh, based on this, some like model, something like that. I just have a question because um, what is uh, the, like the future directions you think uh, in this paper, because uh, I noticed that they propose a new data set, which is uh, like uh, for, uh, combine, like for example, the knowledge graph and also the the the, uh, the recommendation like uh, uh, data set. So I think what uh, what is the like, future directions you probably think is interesting in the future uh, human human machine uh, conversation. Uh, okay, so um, from from these slides, uh, we can see that in the uh, in the chit chat, actually the uh, completed uh, completed uh, the goal completion rate is quite high. Uh, actually, in the QA QA task, uh, they are quite low. So I think one possible direction is to investigate how to uh, how to use it in the QA uh, scenario. Okay, I'm here. I'm also a little puzzled, like uh, what you guys were talking about. What is exactly the goal of chit chat? I mean, um, is it just to have a, a good interaction and how is it rated? Is there a specific information seeking goal in chit chat? Usually not, right? We don't consider it task oriented. So perhaps uh, it, it is generally, uh, like it says in the paper, um, okay to chit chat uh, because you're just providing, um, you know, some some type of rapport with with the the other person, right, with the uh, human uh, in the loop, right. But uh, definitely, if we're thinking about goal goal oriented uh, work, right, um, these these still uh, need a lot of work, as it says in this slide, right. So they are harder tasks. And so it would be interesting, just like Yi Song was mentioning earlier, whether we can see any difference between the retrieval and the generation strategy for these tasks, right? So um, here it does say a little bit about um, 
it, but it's not significant. It says the generation task uh, seems to be a bit better uh, in the case of doing something like chit chat, uh, which seems to make sense. I mean, you wouldn't want uh, an agent to to just keep on um, repeating things that you've already heard from other people, right? That's what um, that is showing. But uh, for something like QA, uh, I'm actually surprised that um, the generation task does better. You, you'd think if there's enough dense data uh, on, on previous turns that a, a, re a retrieval and ranking system might do better than a, a generation system, right? So the generation system is on the right here and then the, um, the response retrieval system is on the left, right? On the left part of the box. So, um, uh, you know, it, it seems very marginal that the uh, retrieve system does better and uh, that is, I guess, a, a function more of the density of the data set um, or other things that, that might um, uh, look at that. So I'm not sure. I, I mean, they do say they have a fairly large data set, but uh, again, there's quite a lot of data there. So um, I mean, lots of different things. So it may not be very dense. You know, uh, having some idea of the sparsity of the data set would also help. Okay, Shinyan, do you have other questions? I mean, uh, I think you can pose this question uh, both to Yi Song and to Hanan and, and uh, everyone else as well, who's presenting like, what is the strategic direction uh, that you think a recommendation or conversational recommendations are going with, with um, all of this? You know, we, we are looking not just at short range goals, like, okay, it's uh, maybe more important to address uh, low performing uh, areas uh, but you know, well, what 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 do you think is going on in the future? So I invite uh, Hanan and then um, Yi Song to to comment before we get to the next paper. Maybe Yi Song, uh, maybe you, you could elaborate first. Uh, oh, yes, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay, you mean on the Slack, right? Yeah. Uh, either way, in Slack or on, on the, the video is fine. Yeah, okay, so, um, okay, so Siyuan, I just mentioned that uh, what would be the, I mean, the strategic direction of future conversational recommendation. And well, to my mind, I think, um, I think there are generally two types of uh, directions. The first is the same with other machine learning tasks. The second is the, our CRS specific directions. So regarding the, I mean, the, the, the general machine learning directions like robustness, explainable, like, I mean, there are many, many directions as in other machine learning tasks. And as for CRS, I think there are also some task specific uh, goals like to be more sociable. I think there one paper by UC Davis on EM NLP this year on sociable agents, like empathetic agents, I mean, sentiment aware agents. So in this line, another line about uh, CRS could be on, on debate, uh, sorry, on combating the bias. Uh, I think the one team in ByteDance is doing so. Combating the bias uh, of conversation recommendation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, yeah, to, and to so that listen. actually points forward to uh, next week's lecture when we're starting yeah. uh, bias and equity and fairness. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so thanks, Yi Song, for that. Uh, any words yeah, from Jenna? Okay, uh, maybe Hanan can uh, respond to Shinren's query either on Slack later or you know uh, after the last paper because we still have one paper left to go. So uh, we'll uh, end Hanan's uh, presentation here. Thanks so much. Uh, I mean... And uh, you can stop sharing your screen and we'll go to the last presenter for the day. Uh -huh. Can you see my screen? Yeah.
So you can start when you're ready. Okay. Uh, I'm the final presenter. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Tai Yufan. Today, I will show you with this paper towards knowledge-based recommender dialogue system. Uh, uh, last week, we have talked about the difference between the recommender and the search engine. From our human being's perspective, we passively receive information from the recommender system, but proactively, uh, pro but proactively, but proactively ask questions to search something. Uh, the output of the recommender system is personal, while the traditional output of search engine is standard. Third, to build a recommender system, we prefer to focus on persistent service which means check the behaviors of the users while the search engine focuses on the efficiency of the system. First, for input part, recommend system usually receive implicit information like our human feelings, while search engine receive explicit information like a query. Uh, if we talk about the progress of the search engine nowadays, actually we can also see search engine adopts many advantages of the recommender system like personalized recommend and the pers persistent service. And for our today's topic, knowledge-based conversational recommender system, it actually combines the advantage of the recommender system and the search engine. Okay, first we talk about the motivation. There are two shortages for the classical paper for for conversational recommender system redial, only mentioned items are used for recommender and the recommender cannot help generate better dialogue. To solve these questions, the paper introduced the knowledge-based recommender dialogue system, KBDR, or KBRD. It consists of one recommender system and one dialogue generation system. A, di a, di a dialogue system should respond to users' utterance with informative natural language expressions and a recommender system should provide high quality recommendation based on the content of user's utterance. And this is an example. Uh, an ideal recommender dialogue is an end-to-end -end framework that uh, can effectively integrate the two systems so that they can bring mutual benefits to one another. Uh, an ideal recommender dialogue system is the end-to-end -end framework that can effectively integrate the two systems. Um, information from the recommender system can provide vital information to maintain multi-turn dialogue, while information from the dialogue system that contains implication of user's preference can enhance the quality of recommendation. This, uh, this instance shows the link between two parts Uh, here is the model architecture, one dialogue system and one recommender system. The framework enable interaction between the two systems. First, informative entities are linked to an external knowledge graph, knowledge graph and sent to the recommender with items. They are propagated on the knowledge graph via a relational graph convolution network, RGCN, enriching the representation of user interest. Second, the knowledge enhanced user representation is sent back to the dialogue system in the form of vocabulary bias, enabling it to generate response that are consistent with the user's interest. Now we first look at the switching net mechanism. In order to perform end-to-end -end training, we have to combine the recommender and the conversation system. Here, the paper used the switching, switching mechanism. And by the way, the Google online platform doesn't support formula editor. So I used the LaTeX plugin, and sometimes it looks a bit strange. Um, the PIEC is the, uh, is the prob probability distribution of the item set and the P dialog, uh, the P dialog is the output of the dialog system. V is the vocabulary. A switch mechanism controls the decoder to decide whether it should generate a word from the vocabulary or an end time 
or an item from the recommender output at a certain time step. Uh, the, w, the W represents either a word from the vocabulary or an item from the item list. The O is the hidden representation in the final layers of the dialogue system. And then WB are the parameters and the sigma refers to the sigma function. With the switching mechanism, the whole system can be trained end to end. Now uh, we let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the other parts. How to incorporating dialogue content? A knowledge graph G consisting of triples HRT, HT, HT is head and the tail belongs to entity set E, and the R relation belongs to the relation set of the knowledge graph. With the entity linking and the item linking on the dialogue contents. And in that way, informative, uh, informative non-item entities appear in the dialogue content can match to the entity set. Finally, we can represent the user as a sum entity consists of, of both items and the linked entities. Uh, here's an example. A movie item Star Wars is matched to this link in the knowledge graph and uh, the utterance, I like science, um, movies, Alex like science movies is associated with that link. And the uh, utterance may be uh, associated with one or multiple entities. Uh, here we are talking about the uh, relation graph convolution networks. This paper applies the RGCRN to encode the structure and the relational information in the knowledge graph to entity, uh, to entity hidden representations. The intuition behind that is that neighboring nodes in the knowledge graph may share similar features that are useful for recommendation. Like uh, when a user speaks of his preference on an actor or actress, the recommender should provide movies that have a close connection to that person. For detail, a trainable embedding matrix X, H for nodes on the knowledge graph, then for no, uh, each node V in entity set at layer L, the model computes with the following, following formula, where small h denotes the hidden layer representation of the node V at the L layer of the graph neural network, and then DL denotes the, denotes the dimension of the representation at the layer. N R V NRV, NRV, NRV denotes the set of neighbors in due, uh, with the node V on the relation R. And uh, the first WLR is a learnable relation specific transformation matrix. And uh, the second uh, WL link is the, also a learnable matrix for transforming the node representation at the current layers. The CVR is the normalization constant that can either be learned or chosen in advance. For each node, uh, for each node on the graph, it receives the uh, it receives and aggregates the message from its neighbor's node after relation specific transformation. Then it combines information with its hidden representation to form its update representation at the next layer. The next part is the entity attention. Uh, entity attention is to re recommend items to use uh, based, on knowledge, uh, based on knowledge enhanced entity representation. While item correspond to an entity on the knowledge graph, a user may have interest, interacted with multiple entities. H, uh, H is the re resulting knowledge enhanced hidden uh, representation matrix for entities, and uh, given the number of tall tall u, it first look up the knowledge enhanced representation of entities. Small h is the hidden vectors of vector of, of entities. In order to compute the similarity between the user and the item, they compute the uh, linear combination of these entities of these entities. Uh, like uh, of these entities to encode this vector set of a 
variable size to a vector of fixed size. And they use the self-attention mechanism. They take takes H as an input and the outputs a distribution alpha over the vectors. The two W is also the uh, the two W is also the parameters. Uh, then come to the final uh, final re representation of use the final representation of use the TU. Finally, the output of the uh, recommender is computed as formula six. For recommendation, a well dialogue it introduced the transformer. Um, we will not talk about the details of the transformer. If you are interested or confused, please refer to the original transformer paper. We have talked before. You can also refer to the before lectures. And after the decoder generate a representation all at the each at each decoding time step, the output layer generate a probability distribution of the vocabulary to predict a word at each decoding time step. Here, uh, the BU is computed by function f. F uh, is, uh, represents a feed-forward neural network, and the TU is the user representation. We have just uh, introduced. Okay, now is the experiment. The data set is the traditional standard data set redial. The setting is listed as below and uh, the metric for dialogue generation is a bit complex. We can, uh, the first is auto automatic evaluation, perplexity and a distinct uh, n-gram. Perplexity is a measurement for the fluency of natural language. The perplexity refers to the higher fluency. Distinct n-gram is a measurement for the diversity of natural language. Uh, as to human evaluation, 10 annotators evaluate on 100 multi turn dialogues. The ranges of score is one to three, just similar to the previous work. Uh, for recommender uh, metrics, recall at K, uh, means whether the top K item selected by the recommended system contains the ground truth. Uh, KBRD, KBRD stands for only incorporating the dialogue content. KBRDK stands for only incorporating the knowledge. The result shows that the interaction between the dialogue system and the external knowledge, KBRD is for are helpful for the improvement of model performance. And uh, here PPL uh, stands for perplexity and uh, this three, this four is the distinct, uh, distinct three gram and the four gram respectively. Uh, CSTC means consistency. And then for dialogue generation, the proposed model KBRD also uh, performs the best uh, in all evaluations. Uh, now we can uh, have a detailed result analysis. First, the dialogue help recommendation. We can refer to the performance of the recommender system with different number of mentioned items. We can find that the most the most of dialogues contain only a few mentioned items. That means the data set, uh, the data set contains many conversations that only contains few mentioned items. So it is important for the system to perform high quality recommendation with only a small number of mentioned items. Uh, actually, this also corresponds to the classical problem called star, called start. Uh, we can see that the model including dialogue performs very performs very well because the uh, model with D and the hours incorporating the dialogue content it performs very well. This shows that the dialogue do help recommendation. The second question is that does the recommendation help dialogue? Uh, we recall that the recommender gave the dialogue system a recommendation of where vocabulary bias be you. I have just mentioned. You can see that some examples of visualization top eight vocabulary bias. C 
they are all closely related to the corresponding movies. Then that means recommended do help dialogue. Uh, before I finish my talk, I want to quickly share a new progress. The current SOTA on the Redai dataset is a new paper published this year. So I think it is beneficial to read this new paper for us to think how to build a new model. Uh, for the time limit, we just have a short glance. For the title, we can see that the important point is the semantic fusion. Look at the example. We can see that the scary, the thrill, uh, thriller, and the good plot, these words may be not contained in the knowledge graph, but also provide useful information. So based on this observation, we can see that the model architecture, uh, we can find that uh, it extracts the dialogue into item set and the word set. The word is what uh, I just mentioned. For item set, follow the RGCN layer we just talked about. And for the word set, it use concept net and then combines with item information for, uh, for future prediction. Uh, for more details, you can refer to the paper. Uh, and there is a model workflow. This is a vivid picture. And uh, if you are interested, you please uh, have a try. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, uh, Yifan, for uh, the talk and the bonus uh, material at the end. So that's nice to, to point to uh, current work that's um, still not actually published yet, but uh, in, in progress, right? Uh, accepted, but not published. So um, yeah, uh, I think uh, you guys can, especially those of you who are interested in recommendation systems and doing projects in this, I guess you find you may be doing that as well because you read this paper. Um, uh, you can look into these uh, parts. Okay. Um, so do we have questions from the floor before we go? It's uh, a little bit over free. We can uh, spare a couple more minutes here. So uh, I'll ask Yufan the same question that uh, uh, um, uh, Xinyuan asked, uh, what do you think is the strategic uh, next steps that people are going to do? Uh, we've seen at least three papers refer to knowledge graphs, right? So uh, um, Yisong presented his own work, uh, co-authored, where they're looking at pathways. Uh, but this one and uh, that uh, you're showing on the screen now, as well as the one that you primarily presented, are, are using knowledge graphs without having a directed path, right? So um, what do you think is the, the things that people are going to be concentrating on in the next couple of years? Uh, I think uh, with this paper, we can see that we have to uh, more data mining on the uh, on what the users think about, on what the users uh, say in the conversation. Uh, this paper actually utilized some words that uh, that was not contained in the knowledge graph, so it will be benef uh, beneficial to uh, utilize more information in the conversation. Okay, so you feel that the direction of uh, getting more data out from knowledge graphs and sources will be beneficial for... Uh... Okay, I'll offer some of my own thoughts about this. I think, you know, recommender systems integrating with knowledge graphs are getting uh, better. And of course, we can project in the future that we're going to have better and better knowledge graphs. Uh, people are working on that anyways. So uh, these systems are getting better. What I, I don't see getting any better with the current systems is a uh, higher order dialogue management. So uh, we can see this in a lot of discourse systems that they can sort of make local sense. Okay, like if you take two to three or four turn windows, the conversations make a lot of sense. But when you go for a strategic conversation with a friend or um, a, you know, a, a parent or someone else like that, uh, you, you expect a, a better, um, uh, conversation, right? So uh, we could say that, you know, when you're not paying attention, you can also do the same type of um, 
type of dialogue, which is like you locally can make a contextual response. But if you were to hold this type of conversation with your best friend for a long time, you say, hey, you're not paying attention. You, you know, you can answer the questions, but you have no idea what I'm trying to do, right? I'm not uh, actually asking for a, a movie recommendation. I'm, you know, I'm saying that, you know, this actress is great, you know, for something like that. And um, our current systems don't have um, the capability of really having a higher order understanding of goals. So the goals that you see today are fairly primitive. Yeah. Uh, Sunil, did you have something you wanted to say? No. Okay. Uh, no. 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 Uh, you. I, I, I agree. Agree with uh, agree with your thinking because I think actually now I we just like uh, we just uh, follow some idea from the search engine like we uh, search some words in the conversation but actually the machine maybe not understanding actually what the user talk about. We just uh, explicit extract the items and the words from the conversation. Yeah, and uh, you can see there's a lot more work in unsupervised and semi-supervised information. And those are really good for getting these sort of local, local nuances right. But to really understand the high level aspects of this course, we don't have really much any data for that. Um, so it takes a a, quite a bit more inference uh, and I believe a lot of like supervised or unsupervised when they're trying to tackle, you know, what is the structure of dialogue in, in a much more um, pragmatic sense than rather just local coherent sense, maybe we'll get better at that, right? So um, even when we have our own conversations now, right? Yeah. We, we have, um, uh, you know, in this session, we, we have certain turns that are being taken, certain questions and answers. They have um, a hierarchical and, um, you know, pedagogical reasons for taking place. Um, and uh, I think it's still pretty hard for recommendation systems to, to or, or, you know, uh, conversational systems to really aim at that. Okay. Yeah. Um, any final words from anyone? Okay, I think we're all petered out. It is Friday afternoon. You should be having happy hour instead of staying here and looking at uh, difficult maps and recommendation systems. So uh, next week uh, we have our final topic, uh, which is going to be on fairness and bias. And uh, I think the team 11, uh, week 11 folks are already getting uh, quite well underway for that. So uh, again, a big thanks to all of our presenters today. Please put your hands together for them. Okay, and uh, uh, we'll see you next week, uh, same time. Okay, take care. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Everyone.